So, so I was talking to Tuba and Lewis, yeah, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, because they was asking about, you know, they were keen to do something where they want to be able to start their own business and not quite sure what it would be. And I kind of said, well, forget about setting up your own business, but just focus in on what's interesting to you, what what you're passionate about, what you're curious about. And then through just talking through that, we came to the idea of these guys just to do something and just to get a bit of momentum, which it looks like has been positive, right? It's, you've been doing stuff already since then to start something and just that first step is always the hardest. Um, we said about doing a podcast. So Lewis and Tuba then recorded a conversation between the two of them because, you know, they've you've, you've all gone to the same school, right? I went to the same school as well. You know, we all come from the same school. But um, since you've left, you've all kind of done slightly different things in different colleges and different plans and so on. Um, but but we kind of had the idea that, you know, maybe just Lewis and Tuba talking about their experience since you left school and what you're going to be doing and what's happened to you and what ideas you've got just might be quite interesting as a as a topic um, and then go from there and see what happens. So the GPT bit came into it because after these guys done the podcast, so I helped them with different software to use. So like there's software you can use to record it, there's software you can use to transcribe it, there's software you can use to then put it out there so there's like Descripts they use to record it and then um, get the transcripts. You can use something called Buzzsprout and then you just you, you upload it there and then it will upload it in all the different um, channels like Spotify and Apple and all the other 10 or 15 channels or so. And then what you alongside that you want to there's lots of other things you need to do like creating blogs and thumbnails and little you know little thumbnails for your video and thumbnails for instagram and all the different bits that come along with it but what you can use is use ai to help you with all this all, all these things you need to do and ai artificial intelligence does anyone know how long ai has been around for it's been around since world war Two. Oh, wow. right so it's been around for a long time you must have heard of like Aaron Turing and the Enigma machine and cracking codes and all of that. That's kind of where it started. Um, so so it started on the back of World War Two, and so from the work that Alan Turing did then, you know, they built the first computer in the early 50s or so. And, you know, that was like a big, you would have like a massive hall full of all these machines and it's about as powerful as calculator. And then over time, um, advances in technology meant that computing power was better um technology got better you had integrated circuits and transistors and all these things improved through to where you got to in i think it was 1960 1967 i think it was or um the, in the 60s you had the world's first integrated circuits so you had one transistor on one circuit and then after that it was late 50s, sorry. You had, you had one transistor on one circuit. When the moon landings happened, you had 17,000 transistors on one circuit. And then anyone have a guess on how many transistors on your iPhone? Uh, it's, in, it's in the billions. Oh, geez. And, and, and the most transistors you can get on a, on a circuit now is in the trillions, right? So it's the same circuit, you know, but now you can get trillions of transistors on there so what does that mean that means it's more powerful in the same way you know when you were a few years back when you might have had like a usb stick for example you know you might have had you know a certain amount of megabyte memory on there and it costs you 20 quid whereas now if you go and spend 20 quid you'll have probably 10 times the amount of memory on it so all of this is advances in computing power and storage um, and alongside advances in computing power and storage you've got advances in um bandwidth you know when i when i went to school there was no internet that was easily accessible it was all just a uh, kind of research projects in universities and when i started university in 97 it was all green screen and when i say green screen there's these old computers where it's a black screen and all we have is green text on it so you call them green screens 
So you, you could access your email, and I still remember my, my email address was bx110 at city.ac.uk, and you had, and you, it was just literally used for just sending messages to one another. It was nothing like it was now. And then quite quickly, you started having Hotmail, and then search engines, there was like Ask Jeeves and Alta Vista and all these other ones. And then Google came around in like early 2000s or something. And then it's kind of all gone very exponential since then. Oh, Daniel. Um, and alongside all of that, you've got um, all of these technologies have helped enable what's happening with AI. Because now you've got these super powerful computers that are you know, down to little tiny transistor chips and so on. You've got cloud technology. Does everyone know what cloud is? Because I can explain it if you don't. So, so cloud, cloud basically is. So again, if this was when I left school, if you want, if you wanted to have a website, you would have to go and buy a server, which is just like a big massive PC. Basically, you'd have to buy a server. And you'd have to buy it's called rack space and you'd like you put it's like literally racks in like this big computer you put stuff into it and that becomes a server and then you would have to do that in order for you to build a website because the website's got to sit somewhere so and then you'd make that available on the internet whereas now you don't need to build servers you just go to aws which is amazon web services or gcp which is google cloud or um, microsoft azure so basically AWS is like the go-to cloud service. And now we could go and set up a website now and it would take us, you know, five minutes and we just do it on AWS. We don't worry about any of the servers or storage, any of that stuff all gets taken care of automatically. And that's what technology is doing. It's always improving all the time. Now, why is all that important? Because AI has been around since World War II, right? And nothing's really happened at least to the layman, you know, the person on the street, nothing's really happened until all of a sudden it's exploded, right? It looks like it's exploded in the last couple of months. It's always been there. It's been there for, you know, a long, long time. But what's happened is like all these things grow incrementally. So I was talking, I went into the old school um, in January and I was talking to them about ex exponential technology. And does anyone know, does anyone kind of understand exponential, kind of what exponential means? So basically, just think about it in terms of doubling. So, so if you've got, um, if you, you have something that's growing linearly, it's going from one to two to three to four to five to six, and just going linearly. If it's going exponentially, it's going from one to two to four to eight to sixteen to thirty-two to sixty-four, and when you keep going up, it suddenly um, accelerates. It looks like it accelerates really quickly. Well, it does accelerate really quickly, and that's because. The, the the way you kind of think about things, it's quite difficult in your mind to imagine actually the power of that doubling. So if you if you took like 30 steps, for example, you would walk 30 meters. If you took 30 exponential steps, do you know how far you would get? No. You could go 26 times around the world. Whoa. So you you would go a billion billion meters if you took 30 steps that's the difference right if you take 30 linear steps you go 30 meters you take 30 exponential steps you go a billion meters so if you take 10 steps you get 10 meters if you take 10 exponential steps you get to a million right so so when you're thinking about all these you know when the business opportunity that you're you know searching for you really want to be doing something that's got exponential growth in it because that's when things just explode right but things don't happen quickly like you've seen with AI. It's been around since World War II, but it's done that one, two, four, eight, and it's been going along really slowly. And now it's beginning to that. It's, prob it's probably on like the 10th step now where you're going from, a, you know, all of a sudden it's gone from, you know, 250,000, 500,000, a million, 2 million, 4 million, 8 million, 10 million, da -da 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 billion. And all of a sudden it looks like it's just gone gangbusters. Which is what I think what's happening at the moment, you're just beginning to see going onto that really fast curve. So that means that all the stuff that has been happening in the last couple of months, it's going to get faster and faster and faster. So you need to understand what these technologies do. And you don't you don't need to understand how they work, but you need to understand the importance of them and you need to 
factor it in in some of the decisions that you're making. So I can I, I can talk through ChatGPT now and kind of what it is and some of the background of it. I can show you how to use it, but then at the end I'll talk about um, jobs and working and what life's going to look like because some of the jobs you might have been considering might be like this is going to get automated away by GPT. Um, so my focus area might need to be slightly different, right? So, okay, what is GPT? So it's a, it's a general pre-trained transformer is what it stands for. And basically it's within machine learning. So machine learning is kind of what it says on the tin. It's basically you feed loads of data into a, into a computer model and it will start to try and uh, learn from the data and then predict things that's going to happen. So machine learning is everywhere. It's been around, you know, um, actively probably for for a long time. But you, any of the apps that you'll have on your phone and things like that would all be using it. Like when you're looking at TikTok, there's there's an algorithm behind it, a machine learning algorithm that's predicting what to show you next because it's going to resonate with you based on all your user behavior from the past and based on you know your where you live and who you are and where you're from there's an algorithm that's predicting all this stuff so that's been around you know since all of social media it's built on all this stuff um that's you know machine learning is doing there's lots of different parts to it and there's loads of stuff in the web if you want to kind of learn more about it it looks like it gets very complicated very quickly but try and see beyond that and don't get scared whenever you see all the mathematics behind all these things if you do start investigating it just kind of breeze over it and because it's you just get it will scare you it scares me when i look at it because i'm not a mathematician um but then chat gpt so so gpt again has been around for a while gpt was formed by open ai is the company behind it um they started working on it i think about five years ago four years ago something like that there was GPT-1 and 2 and 3 and 3.5 three and, and now GPT-4. GPT-5 is due out next year, I think, or maybe later this year. Apparently, it's been tested already somewhere. Um, you then have why it suddenly looks like it's gone crazy is because chat GPT is then providing a chat interface based on these GPT models. The clever stuff is the GPT models under the hood. And then the chat interface is they're making it really easy to use. And then like you've probably played around with it, you can see that it's, it is very easy to use and it feels like you're just talking to a person, right? Um, Daniel, just want to go mute because there's a little bit of feedback, I think, from your speaker. Um, so chat GPT, so it was launched in the end of November. Um, that was chat GPT 3.5. Chat GPT 4 is launched two weeks ago, I think it was. So it's not been a long, not been around for long. It was the fastest adopted bit of software in history. So within one week, it had a million users. Within one month, it had a hundred million users. So what's that? That's exponential growth, right? Like that. Imagine you plotting it as a chart. That is that that really is exponential growth. So what they've released essentially is as they're building out this model, they've released it out to the public and it's still kind of in, in beta. And when someone says something's in beta, it means they're still testing it. So they put it out there because if you then suddenly have 100 million people asking it all these questions and doing stuff, every time you're asking it a question, it goes back into the model and it feeds the model again. So all, all of this stuff is iterative and it's always building on, 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 on the, last, you know, the last thing. And if you think about what machine learning kind of, if you're looking at a picture of it, it's like this kind of giant kind of spider web that's moving from left to right, and it just keeps forming more more strands to it as it goes as it goes forward. And that's essentially what it's doing. It's querying all this all these different parameters of what an answer could be, and then it returns a result. So in the in the last um, GPT three. I think, and I might be wrong, but I think it was like a billion parameters or a billion kind of things it's checking every time. Whereas now it's gone to 175 billion. Uh, and the next time it's probably going to be a trillion. So basically every time it asks you a question, it's checking a trillion different versions of it and then working out, working out a response to you. Like, like you would in your, in your mind, right? Your mind, your brain does exactly the same thing. When someone asks you a question, you're doing this without thinking about it. 
you're going back in your mind and you're checking because your brain has 100 trillion, 100 billion synapses. And I think it's 100 trillion, something trillion, a lot. <laughs> um, but basically a lot of in, in the same way a GPT has all of these parameters, your brain's got synapses and connections. And machine learning is modeled somewhat on how the brain kind of works. So what, when you're asked a question, your brain goes away and it's doing, it's doing exactly the same stuff. And it's checking all these times something's happened in the past. And what happens is you have things like, for example, reinforcement learning, which is a, a technical term for machine learning. When you teach something, like when you have pictures of a dog, or like, you know, when you log into something sometimes and it says, click on the one that's a traffic sign or click on the one that's a bicycle you're training a machine learning model when you're doing that. And you know what you're training that model to do. That's going to people like Tesla and Google to train their driverless cars. That's what you're doing when you're doing that. You're training a data set because every time you're logging into something like that, you're a human validating a, a training model. That's what you're doing when you're doing it. It's not, it's, a part of it is there for security. Part of it is there is you're giving away free training to, to companies that then want to use these models. So, so you then have, um, yeah, this, this ability then to um, train something through reinforcement. That's reinforcement learning. There's all these different strands of machine learning, right? But it's the same way if, if you've got a dog and it keeps coming up and weeing on the sofa, right? And you might give it a good slap around the head and say, no, you can't do that. And then it does it a few more times. And then after you've told it off enough times, it will understand not to do it. Right. In the same way that a dog or a person, when you tell them enough times, they'll understand not to do something or understand how to do something and how your brain works. All that's do your brain physically is creating connections between one synapse to another and the connection gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So now I don't know if you guys started driving yet, but when you start driving, you're probably terrible and no one wants to be in a car with you because it's really scary. But when you've been driving for 25 years or whatever it is that I've been driving, I don't think about it, right? I just get in the car and I just go. I don't think about driving. I don't think about, oh, I need to do this now. I need to do this now. It just happens naturally because I've reinforced my mind and my brain cells and my synapses to do this for me, right? So that's what, when you're doing machine learning, that's essentially what you're training machines to do. You know, they get better at certain things. So when you're interacting with chat gpt or when you're selecting the, the traffic signs when you're logging into something you're training the model right so so chat gpt is now um is now kind of everywhere because people are going crazy about it and there has been lots of papers released about you know is it going to take over jobs and all these type of things my perspective and my opinion on it is that it's there as a tool to help you do stuff which is what technology is, right? Because technology is anything that helps you do stuff better. So technology can be when you're a caveman and you figured out how to rub some sticks of wood together to cause fire, that's technology, right? If when you, when you were, you know, in, um, you know, 150 years ago and people started inventing, or maybe 100 years ago, when people started moving from hand washing clothes into having mechanical machines where you could spin stuff to dry them quicker through to having a washing machine and a tumble dryer. That's technology saving you time. Technology saves you time. That's the main thing that it does. It makes you more productive, more efficient and saves you time. That's what technology does, right? And it can be something very simple and mechanical or it can be something like software. So all that GPT is doing is saving you time. Um, and I won't, when we go into this example of what Lewis and Tuba did, I'll show you how it saves time. Like I, I use it, I'm using it, um, and my company uses it for lots of different things. The developers use it for helping uh, write code to test code that they're writing. They use it as someone to bounce ideas off. Um, sales and marketing use it for generating content, for um, bouncing ideas off as well. What it's really good for in terms of AI, AI is a really broad term. What GPT is, is a large language model. So basically it's got this ability to um, 
read and understand all of this information that's out there and then give these kind of human-like responses. So it's a large language model. That's one type of AI. There's loads of types of AI that do lots of different stuff. You know, some of them might be in, say, like robotics. You know, some of it might be in uh, chat messages. Some of it is in doing TikTok algorithms to show you content. It's all artificial intelligence. It's all machine. Well, it's all machine learning, right? Right, really. Artificial intelligence is kind of sits at the top. Then you've got machine learning as a different part of it. Then you've got different types of machine learning. So GPT is a large language model. And why people love it is because it feels so natural when you're talking to it and it understands context um, and it can write stuff really, really well. So I'll stop there. Has anyone got any questions? Otherwise, I'll kind of jump in then to an example. Okay. All right. So let me share my screen. Matt. Matt. Yep. Um, do you mind at the end? Like, do you know, are you, um, are you uh, sort of, uh, is your knowledge on like investing with like uh, chat GP, chat B, B, T, GPT? Like, do you know um, any like good um, stuff to invest in um, that's sort of, that's sort of related to this sort of stuff? uh the the one that people are looking at is and probably the best one because it's very very broad for artificial intelligence is nvidia so oh, yeah. it's uh got, yeah so they well, so they they make gpus so yeah. and and gpus are used to power a lot of um servers and applications and systems and platforms and what have you uh, and it will sit as, a, as, as the engine, essentially, powering all this stuff. That's the broadest one um, yeah. where people are kind of looking at. Otherwise, there's lots of, you know, loads and loads of companies that specifically do solutions based in the area that they're in. But NVIDIA is the broadest one. Yeah, I've got, I got like, I've only got a little bit of money in there at the moment. But yeah, it definitely seems like it's going to, that one seems, well, I've done a bit of research, but yeah, that one seems pretty good. Yeah, and then obviously Microsoft is, um, a, you know, pretty much 50% shareholder in OpenAI. Yeah. And then and then Microsoft has rolled out, um, GPT into everything. Everything that they do is 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 in Microsoft now. Um, yeah. they call it Copilot. So so you've got Copilot in Excel, in PowerPoint, in Word, and all the other stuff that Microsoft do. So um. Yeah, I and mean, you can see their share, both both those two companies, their share price has gone up since that time. Um, I don't give investment advice, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. But but no, I'm, I I've owned Microsoft and Nvidia for a while because I I kind of I, I've been using and dealing with Microsoft for a while, and since I started messing around with chatbots, actually about six years ago, that's when I started buying it. Um, and yeah. then Nvidia, I probably started buying that about four years ago, five years ago, on on the basis of them powering a lot of AI. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're two pretty solid companies that aren't going, aren't going away and they're probably, yeah. you know, pretty safe bets if, if you're holding them for the, for the long term. Yeah. Um, but the long term now can change, right? Because now AI is growing at an exponential rate. Mm. Things can be shaken up probably quite a lot <laughs> in yeah. in the next you know five ten twenty years difficult yeah. probably to predict um exactly um actually on that point let me just grab a slide which <laughs> when i went into the school i was i was doing a slide on what's going to happen in the future hang on let me just find it <laughs> i had covid over the weekend so that's why i've got a cough uh... Right, let me find the slide. Right, so I, I was talking to uh, a bunch of kids who are 15. So that's why this timeline starts at 2008. And actually, before I jump into this one, let's go back to the other one.
will be quite interesting. Um, I'll whiz through this very quickly. But let's let's just say, for sake of argument, you were born in 2008 as well. Um, I was pointing out that you guys are most likely to live, definitely likely to live to 100, probably beyond that. So all these decisions that you're kind of thinking about now and you think you need to find this big thing that you need to solve for in the next couple of years, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter if you do it um, now in the next year or two or if you do it in 10 years' time. If you live to 100, 120, it doesn't make any difference in the long run, right? Ideally, you want to do it like tomorrow, like I do and everyone does, but things don't happen quickly. Things happen with hard work and learning and experience and so on. Um, so the point of this was, OK, if you're you're studying, if this is assuming you're 15, we know you're a little bit older, but you're studying, um, you then might go to university, so you might you know study a bit more. And then by the time you leave university, you've done 17 and a half percent of your life, right? By the time you're 50, you're only 40 percent, you know, through your lifespan. So that kind of puts it into perspective, given that you're most likely going to live that long, because the reason you're most likely going to live to that long, you can go on yourself, go onto like the, the Office of National Statistics, the ONS, and just, just search like ONS UK life expectancy. And you can stick in your age and it'll tell you your life expectancy. And it'll probably be like 88, something like that. But because you've got improvements in healthcare, which is happening constantly, and AI is only going to accelerate that, you're going to live probably to 100, probably longer. Um, so that's just something to think about when you're thinking about, you know, you need to be making all these decisions and so on, because it doesn't matter in the long run. Nothing matters in the long run because, <laughs> you know, all these things smooth out in the long run. Um, so that was that was kind of looking looking forward and put it put that into perspective as well. In 1908. So this was going back 100 years. If you're born in 2008, going back 100 years, your life expectancy was 40. That's only, a, you know, 120 years ago or whatever. Your life expectancy was 40. Fast forward 100 years, it's 80. Doubled. Yeah, exponential growth again. Right? Now, humans aren't going to have exponential growth because you're not going to live to a billion or something. But you could if you suddenly downloaded your brain into a computer, right? So as there's, there's lots of theories that um, artificial intelligence and brain computer interfaces and so on it's just the next evolution of being a human right you're just you're a human digitally rather than physically um that's quite interesting if you like sci-fi and you get into that um so you can see again exponential growth here world population 1.7 billion 8 billion yeah so you see all these things suddenly go like this that's all happened in the last 100 years now the interesting thing is when you go back to 1908 you had you obviously heard the term shit shoveler. That was actually someone's job. There were shit shovelers. That, that was jobs. In 1908 and all the years before that, people were employed to shovel shit because that's what the streets used to look like. And why did the streets look like that? Because there was no cars. There was horse and cart, right? And obviously horses leave poo everywhere and it needs to be cleaned up. And then so in the newspapers at the time, people were worried that in 50 years, every street in London will be buried under nine feet of manure. But then what happened a year or two later, you had Henry Ford had the Model T, and that was the first mass-produced car. And all of a sudden, the horse poo problem disappeared, right? So all of these, it's a technology. All that is is technology, right? Because at the time, if I was in 1900, I wouldn't have even dreamt about this car taking over the world, right? And all of a sudden it did. And it looked like it came out of nowhere, right? So so again, it's just an, a good example of exponential technologies. Um, let me just then jump to, I mean, this is kind of, I kind of talked through a little bit this already, but you had, this is the kind of the timeline from 2008 up to kind of present day. You know, you had you know, motor cars, planes, computers. Here's, here was the date. I, would, I think I said slightly different date earlier, but first computer, 1947. First integrated circuit, 1957. 
you know, Man on the Moon, PCs, the web, all the, all this other great stuff. So you can see how you've gone from shoveling shit to building large hadron colliders and rockets that can go to space and come back and land, right? So it's that's the pace of technology. Um, but what I wanted to show you was um, going forward. So you guys are going to live to 100. So what's going to happen? So this this is the stuff that's kind of um, pretty likely to happen. You know, pretty hot. Well, very high, very high. It's definitely going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. But the date's probably a little bit off. Um, but you've got so like nuclear fusion. There was a breakthrough in late last year on that. So that basically the breakthrough was you put a certain amount of energy in and you got more energy out. So the things that's going to change, you know, we were talking earlier about USB sticks and how you pay 20 quid for, a, you know, 500 megabytes. And now you can pay 20 quid and you get like, you know, 500 gigabytes on it. Right. So you've added you had this change in storage, computing storage. You've got this change in computing power and that's affected all these other industries and technologies. The bit that's going to happen uh, next will be a change in the cost of um, energy because at the moment energy is expensive because we still rely on fossil fuels you know there's 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 it's moving towards renewable energy but you you've all you all knew what happened with ukraine and the gas prices and energy prices that's because we still rely on fossil fuels right whereas if everything was you know if it was all solar based if it was all if it was nuclear fusion if it was nuclear, you know, you wouldn't have to rely on fossil fuels, right? And then as more stuff comes into that and the technology gets better, then the price of energy comes down, which means then basically energy will become free. If energy becomes free, then you've all heard probably like Bitcoin miners and so on. They've had to, they've had to, um, you know, Bitcoin miners 10 years ago, was, you know, you just plug it in and start making money on it. Whereas now it, there's so much power that needs to go into it, into a computer that's really expensive because the computing power is so high. You have to put them in places like Iceland where um, you you have natural energy uh, power, the cooling uh, that goes into these computers because it's too expensive to use the energy for it, right? So, so again, if energy is free, that changes things. If, you, if computation is free and artificial intelligence is free, that's going to change everything, right? So those two things are in your lifetime, in not not far not far forward in your lifetime. Those two things are going to make a massive difference: free abundant energy and free abundant computing power and artificial artificial intelligence. So, brain computer interface, um, human trials. So they're looking for people at the moment. I mean, you can sign up for it if you want. <laughs> um, but they're looking for people to test brain computer interfaces. So basically, you, I don't know if you've seen the thing where uh, there's a monkey and he's got a brain computer interface and he's playing Pong. You can you can see that online and, and the monkey's just doing it using his brain. He's not doing anything, he's just like thinking about it. So, so they're going to start testing it on people that have lost arms and legs. So you can move a robotic arm or leg. Um, and one of the reasons they're doing that, because Elon Musk's view is that if you don't uh, work with AI, then it could destroy the human race. Um, so his his kind of idea is you can use a BCI, a brain computer interface, and you will you can enhance you as a human with AI. So if you've got ultimately everyone's going to be wearing them, and it will just be a little probably. You know, like the transistors where you can get three trillion of them down, you know, it'll just be a little tiny thing you can't even see. And you probably swallow a pill or something and it will just like absorb into your body. That's, that's, that's probably what will happen. In the meantime, it's going to be something that, you know, the first things, the first uh, trials is going to be some lump of metal that's going to get fused to your skull. Um, but that will change, as you've seen with technology, you know, the rapid pace of how it evolves. But then that's so that ultimately... When I'm thinking, I'll be thinking, but instead of me typing into GPT, I'll think into GPT, and by then it'll be GPT-10 or whatever, and and I'll, and I'll be thinking me and I have AI and we work together. So that's that's kind of where BCI is, that's the path to travel for that. Um, right, in the 2030s, there's lots of stuff that's projected to happen. Humans on Mars, 
I mean, that's that's probably a that's a definite that's going to happen in 2030s. You know, there's like a presidential decree in the US for them to to get NASA on and put humans on Mars. You know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and all these people are trying to fund it privately as well. Quantum computing, that's going to change things as well. That's a massive change in how you approach computing, so computing power. So if you take a classical computer like you've got as a PC or a laptop, um, you can take a uh, a problem in that it could take a classical computer 10,000 years to solve. A quantum computer could do it in like a, you know, a few seconds. And that's called quantum supremacy. And quantum supremacy has already been achieved. Um, the only problem at the moment is really volatile. So it's not like you can have it in a computer and give it to people. It's this big, uh, massive machine, like the machines you had in 1947. It looks like that at the moment. And they've got to keep it at like minus 100 degrees, whatever the number is. Um, and it's really, you know, it's got to be uh, protected from vibrations. So it's really kind of just flaky, but it's but it still does does something. But then over time, that will be, you know, that'll be your next phone, right? What does that mean, quantum computing? So basically, all of the encryption that you see in the world at the moment all can be broken because basically quantum computing can solve many, many things at one time, whereas a classical computer can solve kind of one thing sequentially. Um, so that's going to, that will, that, will, that will be happening in the 2030s. Uh, nanobots, you know, already spoken about transistors coming down to really small, you know, nanobots will be the same. You know, they'll get them down to the size of cells. And then again, you just swallow a pill, goes through, it will zap all of the bad cells. And that, again, is going to want a reason why you may live to 120 or more, because there won't be any, no one's going to get sick anymore. Um, humans uploading brains. There's already some stuff where you can share, uh, uh, you can get um, visualization kind of technologies you can think about something and it can give you a crude image on a screen. You can do that today. Right. So that's only going to get better, right? Longevity escape velocity. That basically means when the technology is good enough so you don't die because you you can essentially live forever because of the healthcare is so good and it improves. That's that's longevity escape velocity. So that probably will happen in your lifetimes in you know in the next 20, 30 years. The, there's a guy called Ray Kurzweil. Um, he he's kind of a famous kind of researcher on AI, and he he kind of came up with with the singularity. This term, the singularity is when AI surpasses human intelligence. So it's what people call like AGI, artificial general intelligence. And basically, um, at that point. AI is more more clever than any human and all collective humans. And this is one of the reasons why, you know, people like Elon Musk are keen on BCIs because you want to be complementary to that AGI rather than having it against you. Um, and then one of the schools of thought as well is at that point in time is if every human has a BCI and then AI reaches a singularity, but all AI, all humans are plugged into it, then the collective consciousness of all the human species suddenly expands, right? Because you're you're the you're all at one with the AI. Um, there's lots of interesting kind of sci-fi type theories about that. It's quite good fun reading it if you like that type of thing. And that feeds into this. I mean, this is a, this sounds pretty out there, right? But essentially, think about that exponential growth. If you then have computers building computers, computers building computers. We're already going to be on the moon in 2030s, and at that point, you've got computers building stuff on the moon and Mars, and and then you go to the next planet and you start building on that planet, and the next one, and the next one, and again, you think about this network effect, the exponential effect. Started off with one planet, then it's two, then it's four, then it's eight. Yeah, so you can see if you follow the exponential kind of route, how suddenly if you if you then had a billion planets that are all part of this human AI collaboration, and they all can talk to each other, then that's where you get this kind of universe as a supercomputer. That's pretty out there, but you can see how it's not completely ridiculous, right? Okay, so let's jump into ChatGPT before that blows your minds. Right, back to Earth. 
um, right, GPT. Um, so you can see all the stupid stuff I've been asking it about. Um, some work stuff. I was watching something last night and I was asking it about, you know, shipping convicts to Australia. I had a fever at the weekend. I was asking about that. Hangover tips. I was hungover last week. You know, just just playing around with all these different things. Um, but let's take uh, the transcript. Right. So this is the transcript for the podcast that these guys did the other day. This is word for word transcript. So you can see, you know, it's written. It's not edited. It's not tidied. It's just written. Uh, well, it's just speech to text. It's not been tidied up. Uh, really, it should be tidied up. Um, but you can see there's how many pages? There's like ten pages here. Six and a half thousand words. Right. So how can how can you do something with this? So what you can do is, sadly, in GPT at the moment, you can only do up to two thousand words in one go. So I've got I've got this plus because I pay like twenty dollars a month which basically means you get a faster service and you can use GPT-4 as well. You don't need to pay, um, but it just means you can always use it. Um, so you've got, you got the ability to select uh, different models. So you've got 3.5 and then you've got GPT-4. Um, basically, the difference in that, if you remember, was the amount of parameters that it's that it's doing. So it's just it's just more intelligent essentially it's looking at more stuff it's doing more things behind the scene um right so so you just got to talk to it like a person you know is is the is the best way so you just got um i have a transcript of a podcast that i recorded or well, that was recorded between two uh, young guys yes, and Tuba. I am going to paste in excerpts of this transcript. And then I want you to help me create a blog and some other content you don't need to do stuff like this but it's it's it's, it's useful for yourself when you're doing it because you you kind of get understand the process so it comes back and tells you yeah sure okay right so there's a limit of like 2000 words so then i'm just gonna have to copy and paste this and it's a bit painful because i need to do it in dribs and drabs so Let's get, okay, let's get. So this is going to take a few minutes. So you got any questions while I'm doing this? It might start doing <clears throat> stuff anyway. There you go. So I just pasted in the first one off its own back. It started doing stuff. So you can see that. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. Or you can read that while I'm just getting the rest. Matt, I've heard of another one called um, Notion, and it seems to be like pretty similar to like Chat GPT. Um, uh, it's it's not. Um, is it not? No, I'll explain to you why in a minute. Hang on, just get all this in there. Right, so I'm gonna. Uh, Notion's integrated. Chat the Chat GPT. Notion is a software company um which does kind of workflow type tools but they've integrated gpt into their platform oh, right. so it's not a rival or something they've just integrated it into what they're doing so like a few not, other companies have will there not be a rival is chat gpt just going to no. leave no it's using gpt okay. it's not a rival a rival would be google bard uh would be uh there's something called llama which is like using all the different free models out there um and then you've got like there's others you know that, that's on large language models and then you've just got you know there's there, there, there's there's lots of them they're, they're kind of thick and fast um right so 
Uh, I've now pasted the full transcript in. It knows this anyway, but this is more to help you see the flow. Right, what do you want it to do? Let's get us write a blog. Right, write me, write me a blog aimed at uh, 15 to 19 year olds. Aim me a, write me a blog that will that will resonate with 15 to 19 year olds uh, in the UK who who are looking for inspiration in career and life choices. Uh, right, uh, 500 words. It's great, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. So essentially, can we just use it like yeah. word for word? Yeah, I mean, this is all original writing that's coming up with. What I, what I would always say though is this is a it's a co-pilot, so you can use it and then you go through and tweak it. And because sometimes it gets stuff wrong, you know, it's still in test mode all this stuff. Sometimes it gets stuff wrong. Sometimes it gets facts wrong. Sometimes it's just talking rubbish. So you use it to save you time, like I was talking about. This is a time-saving tool, right? Technology technology is a time-saving tool. So you use this, so because if you wrote this blog, it would take you a few hours to write that. But yeah. then now you've got something to start with, and you tweak it. You don't. You, this is not a replacement. This is a. This is an enhancement. If people were to use this for like uni and stuff like that, um, does it like detect um, like plagiarism at all, or like anything, or like AI has been used for it? Yeah, I found some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can check uh, tools uh, tools to check plagiarism. Uh, there you go. So if I get this and stick it in here, here you go. Where, whereas if I take like a blog. Uh, right, this blog I wrote, so let's, see what it says. There you go. So, so no, you can't start doing your homework with it, right? Because you'll get caught. What you do, what you use it for, is for enhancing what you're doing, bouncing ideas off to get a starting point. If you if you got a blank bit of paper and you're struggling to start something, that's that's how you use it, and you bounce ideas off it. Don't start submitting, you know, um, 
work that this has done for you because you'll get found out. This is a tool to help you yeah, enhancing what you're doing. So anyway, so what, what you then do, you take this and then you you will go through to Bird Lewis and amend it and edit it and tweak it and put and, and you know, put your own flavor and style on it. Because uh, then you can also say to it as well as like, this sounds like it was written by a robot. Can you make it more conversational like the style of Lewis and Tuba talking? See, it's tried to be, hey there, you know, that's this attempt to be a bit more casual, right? So it's a bit more casual, you can see now. Yeah. But then again, you just take and then and then you might get like three versions of it. You get them all and you think, okay, I like this bit here, I like this bit here, pull them together, tweak it, edit it. You can even you can even get your edited version, chuck it back in again, you know, and see what it does. So 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 use it as a tool to save you time. Right. That's that's the main takeaway here. This is this is what it does. It saves you time. Um and it's great at writing stuff, particularly when you're you need to save time or you're starting from scratch and you're having trouble getting started. Um, OK, so now so we've got a blog, we've got two blogs. Um, so let's say. Uh, can you create a Twitter thread based, based on the blogs and transcripts? Twitter, can you can you create a six part Twitter thread based on the blogs and trans six part Twitter thread and a link in post based on the blogs and transcript? This is where it does save you a lot of time, right? Well, I used I used exactly exactly this today. Because there was a blog, and then I had to post it on LinkedIn, and I had to post it on Twitter, and obviously they're different styles on LinkedIn and Twitter. And Twitter, there's only you know limited amount of characters, and LinkedIn you've got loads, so so you have to change your post. So then using something like this, it just saves you loads of time. If you are then going to start chopping stuff up like this, you know, it's like if you if you think about it already, like if you wrote the blog, that's probably two three hours, writing all these posts. It's going to be half an hour, right? Saves you time. That's that's what it's doing, right? So then you then you got your tweets. So that's Twitter. Gives you the emojis. Does does everything. And again, you tweak it. You use use what you want, and then you tweak the rest. And then it's LinkedIn post because obviously LinkedIn you can have a bit more text. Um, okay, so while it's doing that, the other thing, have you heard of Mid Journey? No? Okay, well, Mid Journey is another form of generative AI. Well, not, sorry, Mid Journey is a company doing another form of generative AI, which is text to image. So there's like DALI 2, which is the open AI um, version. Mid Journey is, is much better. Um, so let me so mid journey. So it's, it's a bit funny how you use it. You have to go into Discord. So so the, these are people giving prompts, and then and then the the bot goes away and creates an image for you. So let's well, let's create one now, or to go with your blog and your um, jumps present. There we go. Um, there's a way to prompt. And it's a bit um, fidgety. If you do imagine, and then so we're going to do hyper realistic 
I can send you some links about how to do this stuff. Uh, streets photography. It's a bit of a shit fest because stuff because everyone around the world is just plonking stuff in there. Uh, UK black and white uh, urban use male urban use uh, talking as a pair in front of a school crowd. Pretty black and white, moody lighting, detailed, inspiring, heavenly glow. E A R sixteen nine. Right, that's a prompt. Oh, fuck's sake. Too busy. <laughs> um, I did one the other day. Would I be able to find it? Maybe. Ah, there we go. I did this prompt the other day. There we go. Go there. That was one. There was a few different images. That was one image it came up with. Um, there were some better ones actually. This, yeah, these ones are pretty good. So that's that's AI, that's AI generating that. That didn't exist until the AI generated it, right? Um, yeah, that one. The, yeah, these ones. I think they were the best one. Like, look at the like. It looks like a real person, right? It's crazy. It's not. That's not a real person. That's AI. Right? That's AI that's generated this. Right. So my point is, you two have done the podcast. You got the transcript. You can go into GPT. You can create, you know, blogs, LinkedIn posts, um, Twitter posts. You can go to Midjourney. You can create pictures like that. There are other platforms. They're not. They're not brilliant. So I'm not going to go through it. But you could take. Like, for example, um, uh, can you take the transcript and rewrite it, rewrite it in the first person, i.e. just just one person talking rather than two people? So now going to generate me another transcript and while it's doing that we can go to like over here and there's I think it's called Movio I was just playing with it on the weekend Movio so then you can go in here and you can get an AI avatar that looks real so let's try it Right, so it's got, we've now got a new transcript. Let's just take the first, first bit there, all right? So that's gone, you've gone from a two-way transcript, now it's a one-way. You can go in here. Uh, I only used it once on the weekend when I was playing with it. Let's have a go. Create video. And let me sh share the sound. Can you hear the sound when I was playing it then? No. Uh, let's get that one. Oh, I don't know. Let me just hold my microphone up to it. I wanted to talk about how important networking is and how it can have a significant impact on our lives, especially for young people like us.
Hey, so I wanted to talk about how important networking is and how it can have a significant impact on our life, especially for young people like us. Right, let's create this video and then it will actually give you the video footage as well. Uh... <laughs> so again these are all ai tools so you can do stuff super quick right okay okay so that's going to crunch away and it will tell me when it's done we'll come back um okay so so now you've got a blog you've got an image you're gonna have a video um what else do we want uh how please give me a layout or a web page uh so that we can target uh listeners to our podcast given you know just do that and then we can say, OK, uh, please draft me. So this tells you exactly how to lay out a web page now and gives you the content. So if you wanted to create like a web page, you know, there's loads of you go to like, a, you know, Wix or GoDaddy or something like that. You can just set up a free website. It's easy. It takes five minutes. You can get it gets to the layout for you. Then you can say uh, to promote the podcast, please, uh, throughout the podcast, uh, it would be good to expand the reach of the audience. What influencers should I target? So, so now you've got your podcast up and running. It's kind of saying, okay, who should you target to get some more reach of the podcast? There you go. It's even giving you some names as well. Right. So it gives you all these things, right? There you go. Tuba, Ben Francis. <laughs> Steve, Steve, Steve Barlett. I've not met him, but you know, Ben, the NFT kid, he's, he's met him knows him but not doesn't know him but he, he would yeah. reply um so then that's your you know your, so so now you got these names like okay great uh can you draft me uh uh an email and linkedin message that i can send to these influencers uh let's focus on what do they call it young entrepreneurs on the young entrepreneur segment there you go it drafts you an email that you can send to these people All right so again saving you time and then you can say that's too formal. Can you make it more casual, like the speaking style of the original transcript? But again, it just gives you something for starters, right? So when you when you want to start reaching out to these people just gives you a, a template to work around. I wouldn't use them exactly because sometimes they look at, you know, it looks like robots written it, but then you put your style on it on top of it. Yeah. But you can see how it gives you, you, know, you just tell it how, how you want, how you want to do it um, and what style you want. You just, just talk to it like it's a person is the best way to do it. Right. Um, okay. So I'll stop there on all of the, Kind of things that you can just start using and playing around with. 
I'll send you some links about jobs because <laughs> I want to go and have my dinner. <laughs> I'm sure you guys do as well. Um, in terms of there's there's two kind of there's a few links I'll send you. Um, actually, let's see if this video is done now. Matt, is this video that Nuvio Nuvio does? Is that because that sort of be seen as like a better alternative than using like free non copyright pictures for like videos? Like, is, like, is that like an alternative to using like Pixel? I just found this on Saturday when I was messing about. Um, but yeah, there's if you if you look for like AI avatar videos, there's loads of them. Your best thing is to film yourself. But this would be if you wanted to kind of scale up and you don't have the um you don't have the time to or the or the means to uh, where's, the, where's the video? Maybe it's not done it yet. I haven't seen it in my email yet. Um, yeah, but it's just, that was just to demonstrate that there's other tools you can use. You know, again, you just think you, you, you the whole the whole point is you can create one bit of original content and then you can multiply it, all right? And then that's how that's how it look. You know, you, it looks like you can be doing all these you know loads and loads of things at once because you're using AI as a tool to help you do more stuff. And on that point, right, so you've got, so this is, I'll send you a link to this. You don't need to read all of it, but there's bits of it that are interesting. So it's basically, this is written by OpenAI, but it's talking about what's the impact of GPTs on the labor market. So they basically think that this, this is what's important. 80% of the US workforce could have at least 10% of their work task affected by the introduction of LLMs, so large language models, while approximately 19% of workers may see at least 50% of their tasks impacted. So if you imagine if my job was doing blogs and social media posts, and, that, and I'd been doing that, then you can look at it two ways, right? Some people think oh, I'm going to be out of a job. The other way is I can do ten times more work, right? Because I can start, I can start uh, multiplying out the number of things I can do at any one time. That's how you want to think about these things. Just in like the 70s or whatever it was, everyone thought like um, school, you know, school kids when they're using calculators wouldn't understand maths, and accountants are going to be out of a job. Or when Excel, Microsoft Excel and spreadsheets are introduced, everyone thought that accountants are going to be out of a job. But actually, now you've got people that their jobs are building applications and spreadsheets and things like that. <laughs> Same with AI. There's going to be jobs like prompt engineer is now a job. That didn't exist like a year ago. Now it's a job, a prompt engineer. So you, you will create prompts to get the best output from these large language models. So I'm going to whisk to the back here. There's some stuff about, right? Uh, yeah, it's talking about jobs that, you know, are safe. Are safe. You're not going to get affected. Um, I think at the back, there's a list. This is, might be interesting for you, actually, if you're thinking about going to university or not. You know, this is these are just some hard facts. Look at this column, the middle one, medium income. It's the median income, depending on what level of education you've got. So regardless of what job you do, if you you know if you have these different levels of qualifications, you earn more money because you're doing jobs that require different levels of expertise. Right? So you know, I mean, this literally like if you're a rocket scientist, <laughs> not many people are rocket scientists, right? But then you can see that as well. You know, that's the, that's, there's, there's, there's less amount of people there than there is at this one and so on. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're thinking about, you know, degrees and things like that. Um, 
this will change, I think, as well over time because people's perspectives on degrees is, is changing at the moment. Um, it's not really necessary now that you can learn stuff yourself on the web or you've got an AI tool to help you. It's not necessary to go and get a PhD. And actually, when it's talking about these things, one of the jobs that's going to get um, that's going to get hit is like if you're a mathematician, right? Yeah, no, you know, you're a mathematician these days. You know, you want to go to Oxford and get a PhD and so on. Whereas that might not really be necessary anymore because I've got a computer to do all that work for me. You still need some people that are, you know, that are super smart on it. Somewhere at the back. Here we go. Right. Uh, Here we go, right. Occupations without any exposed tasks. Remember, this is just for large language models. You know, so it's only stuff related to GPT and large language models. It's not related to robotics, for example, because for, for robotics, that will replace, you know, like that and cement masons, concrete finishers, and mechanics. That's all going to get replaced by robotics, which will, which will there'll be AI and robotics. But an AI or, well, maybe a robot eventually is probably going to start getting involved in that as well. But um, for large language models, you know, it's not going to affect these jobs. So you can see the theme amongst those. It, it requires some physical stuff to happen. So a large language models is not going to help you, help you right? Um, uh, but then if you look at the jobs that it will affect, it's things like... Um, I think we went past it actually. I'll give you a link to some of this stuff. Yeah, there's all these jobs here. Um, actually, there's a lot of stuff in financial markets and data processing, accounting. Um, there's things which, if there's some manual task which requires some sort of sequential task, then um, it's going to get affected. This is quite an interesting um, post based on that report we were just looking at. But essentially, you know, if you if you then look at, you know, it said about 90% of jobs having 50% um, of their tasks is going to get affected. So if you take that with like US GDP, so that's basically the size of the US economy, that will, that will equate to a 4% improvement in the US economy, which is $1 trillion, right? So that improvement is $1 trillion. Um, so that's why, you know, this is talking about this this is the same event in history as when the PC first appeared, which meant that the US labor productivity doubled. So this is the same big impactful event. Bill Gates wrote an article the other day about how you had you know the advent of the PC, the advent of the internet, and then the advent of where we are in AI is the same big event in time and history. So it's it's a it's a humanity changing thing that you're seeing at the moment. So I'm going to stop there. Um, you can see that there's there's a lot of cool stuff there to play around with. I suggest you just all do the same as what I did, right? I only figured out how to use all this stuff from messing about with it. You have to mess about with stuff and don't be afraid. It can't go wrong, right? You're just messing about with it. So play around with GPT play around with mid journey. If you Google just like uh, chat GPT prompts and mid journey prompts, it will help you with how to how to do a prompt when you're talking to it. With chat GPT though, I would just suggest just talk to it like it's a person. Um, and, and when you're talking to it, talk talk to it, telling them, telling it who you are and what your audience that you're trying to attract or talk to. <laughs> and it will... <coughs> It will craft the message in the right way. And you can keep going backwards and forwards with it. And you can just, you can say it's rubbish. Say, right, it's rubbish. Do it again. Make it like this. You know, just talk to it like it's just someone sitting beside you. That's the easiest one. Mid journey, you have to be very specific with the prompts. But if you just Google that, you can, um, you can find lots of guides and stuff that will help you with it. But you can see like, the, you know, that that's worth playing around with. It's a bit, it's a bit clunky because there's loads of people trying to use it at the same time. If you want to use either ChatGPT or Midjourney, I suggest doing it early in the morning, because if you do it any time from lunchtime onwards, then all the US is, is using it, and then it just like times out and it doesn't work and it's a bit flaky. 
Whereas if you do it early in the morning, then there's just people in Europe using it. Okay. Cool. Matt, I've got a quick question. Um, is there any like newsletters or like discords um, you'd recommend to like get into and join just for like more like information? Yeah, I can I can forward you. I'll, I'll stick it in the group. Um, or, or if, if one of you can do another WhatsApp group and you can put everyone on this call on it, yeah. and then um, and then I can. Well, actually, no. I think uh, I think Love Day is the admin for the work in fintech one. Get Love Day to add uh, Max and Noah to it and Lewis as well. If you if you ask him to do that and then ask me that question again, and then yeah. I, I can just dump it all in into there. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, there's lots of good newsletters. All the ones I read are probably very long, but you learn a lot from it, and you have to kind of um, just 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 uh, just keep keep going with it. It will sink in. A lot of this stuff just just it's all trial and error and experimentation, and after a while things will start sinking in. And then after a while, you'll start seeing patterns and connecting dots together, just like human synapses and machine learning models. It's just or it's just it's just pure mechanics. This stuff, when you're learning things, you learn stuff the same as a computer does. So the more you do it, the more you will learn, even if it feels like you're not learning anything, you are learning stuff. Cool. Thanks very much, Matt. That's all right. Thanks, well, I'll, I'll I'll get the recording. I'll I'll stick it on um, YouTube as well, so you got a copy of it. And okay. um and Lewis and Tuba, yeah, crack on and do some. You know, so you need to do get the podcast up. Why don't you play around with GPT about getting a name for the podcast? Um, use something like Canva and create yourself a thumbnail, or maybe use those images <laughs> in Mid Journey and create. Um, let me let me just chuck this in here now. If you want to copy it. This is the prompt that I used for Mid Journey. Why don't you just take a copy of that, Tuba? Um, yeah, so you need to create a thumbnail for Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, or an image. You want to have a, you know, a post. A post you probably want to stick on LinkedIn, on both on your LinkedIn's. Um, yeah, and then get the podcast out. And then start asking it about ideas for the next podcast. Or maybe why don't you all do one between you? Why don't you do the next one? You do it all between you. Or you take turns and you do it, take, you know, alternate between you. Right? Because then the more of you doing it, the more chances of success. Then there's less work you need to do. And then you can get, you know, and if all of you are doing all the stuff I just showed you, can you imagine the amount of content that suddenly comes out of nowhere? And all of a sudden you've got reams of stuff out there and then you add that into your linkedin and your cv and then when you go for a job it's like oh yeah i'm a podcast host and i've got a blog site and i do this and i do this and this yeah and it all looks good and it shows it differentiates you from everyone else your age it's like oh, i've got a level in this and a level in that or you know friendship and this is like oh yeah great so has fifty thousand other people show me something else this is something else all right differentiate yourself this is one way to do it there's lots of ways you can do it this is one way you can do it it's pretty easy and while you're doing it you're understanding how to use chat gpt mid journey writing blogs writing posts creating video content da -da 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 -da. all right you're gaining skills as you're going through it i mean it's a win-win right you're gaining skills you've got stuff to put in your cv through chance, you will definitely have some random conversations with people that are completely unexpected. I mean, like Lewis and Tuba, that's already happened, right? After we spoke last time. Yeah. So you need to increase the surface area of all the people that you know, and therefore the chances of something interesting happening multiplies. Whereas if you just go down this vanilla route of, I'll do my A-level and I'll apply for, get on this course or apply for this job. So is 50,000 other people. Why are you any different? You need to differentiate yourself. So this is one way to do it. So start doing this and see how you get on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good. Cool. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you.
Cool. All right. Thanks, Actually, nice before before, before you go, let, let me just take a quick uh, a quick snapshot of you all, and then I can I can do a post and I'll tag you all on it on LinkedIn or wherever you all live. Uh, hang on, let me get ready and then I'll tell you when to smile. All right, ready? One, two, three, smile. Right, cool. All right, are you all on LinkedIn? Yep. Yeah. Everyone? Yep. Max, uh, Noah? Come on. Get on LinkedIn then. All right. We'll yeah, set up, set up right now. Have a look at Tubers as a, and Ollie's as an example. Just copy it. Obviously put your stuff in it, but copy the layout. <laughs> yeah. Um, get out there now and Noah, do, do the same as Ollie if you haven't done it. That's your, that, that's your external representation of yourself. Like when people, if you're going for job interviews and people don't know who you are, they'll they'll look on, you know, social media and see who you are, what you're doing. And if they look on your LinkedIn, it's like, oh, this kid's doing loads of cool stuff. Oh, didn't know he did that. You know, and then and then it makes you stand out and it might start engaging some conversation and then something might happen. So, yeah, Max, no, that's your homework right now. Go and set up LinkedIn. Cool. All right. Well, I look forward to the updates. Thank you. 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 Thank